The UK government may consider the development of chemical weapons for domestic law enforcement. That's according to the National Academy of Sciences. The group of experts has asked UK officials to clarify their intentions for these substances. The nerve gases being discussed were banned from military use nearly 20 years ago. Well, for more on this, I'm now joined by Mark Bergfeld. He's from the Education Activist Network here in Britain. So the chemical agents being discussed have been banned from use in warfare, as I've just mentioned. Why? would the UK government imagine them to be suitable for domestic use? What we have seen over the last one and a half years is mass resistance taking it to the streets with the students movement at first, with the continued strike movement and trade union movement coming to the streets as well as the riots in, in August. And what we have seen is that the police time and time again has lost control of the streets and thus it doesn't come as a surprise in the context of global revolutions and revolt that now the UK is, try, is starting to use the same measures as countries as Mubarak has done in Egypt or even the Greek government has done to its very own citizens over the general strike. But just how dangerous are these chemicals supposed to be? What effect could they have on you? Um, the incapacitated uh, nerve gas, as it, is, as it is called, has been used against protesters in the June general strike in Greece. And Amnesty International condemned the use of that tear gas uh, in normal language, it's called choking gas, and has said that the Greek government has waged a chemical warfare upon its very own citizens. Now, you can actually die from the, from the gases be, uh, being used against protesters, against larger crowds. Is there evidence of that, that people have actually died as a result of that? Well, in the, in the June general strike in Greece, what we have seen is that one of the communist trade unionists who was on the streets uh, for several hours on that day actually had a lung asphyxiation due to the chemicals being used on Greek streets. And so it wouldn't surprise me if similar cases were to have, if, if, chemical, uh, if these chemicals are being used on British streets, that similar occurrences would happen. How should the police then keep control? You said a little earlier that uh, the police have lost control in the past and we're seeing more and more protests and demonstrations. Isn't some uh, use of some sort of uh, gas or, or a way of stopping protests or uh, uh, apprehending people justified under those circumstances? After all, in Britain a little earlier uh, last year, we saw serious damage and a lot of violence and it had to be controlled somehow, didn't it? We need to ask ourselves the question of why the police has ultimately lost control of the street. The conditions for the mass revolt and for the strike movement as well as students movement aren't due to some criminal energies of, of youth but ultimately are the, are the product of harsh austerity measures whether it is here in Britain, in Ireland, in, in, in Greece. And thus we need to say as citizens that the curtailing of our civil liberties and the curtailing of the right to protest in this country should, should be ultimately condemned. What we need to say is that the police have overextended the use of force on previous demonstrations so far. They have curtailed the right to protest by threatening students to use rubber bullets and water cannons. And the latest announcement actually makes very clear the intentions of the police to further curtail our right to protest. So I don't believe we need to be talking about the side of protesters, but rather of the side of what the police is aiming to do. But do you think the police really can achieve those intentions? Uh, human rights groups are aware of this. Also, there are legal aspects about this as well. Do you think really that these chemicals will be used legally? After all, um, the main news story here is that the government may sanction these nerve agent uh, uh, gases but is it really likely to happen yeah I have never implied that it is is like it is likely to happen at this point in time what I'm referring to is the study released yesterday and the article in the independent which clearly states that the military as well is starting to develop those kinds of it's those kinds of chemicals and we know that these are being used on the Greek protesters as well as Egyptian protesters as as we speak and so what I'm trying to trying to convey is the very fact that we will need to we will need to make sure that the military doesn't use its money and that the st British state doesn't use its money on developing further chemical weapons okay. but rather invests it into education interesting to hear your point of view Mark thanks very much indeed for sharing uh, your points there Thank Mark you. Bergfeld there from uh, the UK